Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, the 6th of March, and it's National Dentists' Day. And a big happy birthday to Kiki D, Alan Davis, Rufus Hound, and Shaquille O'Neal. Waiting for Sue Gray's report became a national hobby during the final days of Boris's chaotic reign as Prime Minister, but now she's back in the headlines. It's because she jumped ship from the civil service to take up a role with Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer as his chief of staff. The new jobs caused a wave of crazed conspiracy theories from Boris supporters who claim her report was some kind of long-running Labour deep state plot to bring him down. Spectator editor Fraser Nelson says the facts were clear. The parliamentary inquiry has found exactly the same. I mean, the, the facts are the facts here. They were having parties at the time where, 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 the, where they were literally going the next day to plan how to crack down, send the police after, give plod the marching orders, was Matt Hancock's language. Boris is due to be called before the Privileges Committee on March the 20th, and he's been frantically spinning to try and unravel as much of the evidence as he can to avoid charges that he misled Parliament, which could see him suspended or expelled. I believe that uh, what we were doing was within the rules, and that's what I, why I said what I said to, to Parliament. And... They found absolutely no evidence to suggest otherwise. Northern Ireland Secretary Chris Heaton Harris still had his back on the Sunday talk shows. I believe him to be an honest man, and he did not knowingly mislead Parliament. He is a gen- generally he's an honest man, and I truly believe that. This week we'll see Rishi Sunak announce a new policy on channel migrants in a bid to stop the ongoing wave of small boat arrivals in the English Channel. New legislation will prevent anyone arriving legally from claiming asylum, seeing them instead deported to Rwanda or a safe third country and banned from returning. Northern Ireland Secretary Chris Heaton Harris was asked on Sky News about the announcement and he says it's important to stop the small boat arrivals as it triggers people in communities. The level of illegal uh, illegal uh, migrants coming to this uh, country, the way the uh, number of the come in of course all sorts of ripples even in my own constituency where the the people who come across in small boats have caused quite some ripples in local communities that have been very comfortable with the level of migration that we've had up until this point. This follows violent far-right protests against migrants, but refugee groups say the proposed legislation is unworkable as asylum seekers have a right to seek protection under UN conventions. Labour's Jonathan Ashworth said that previous attempts haven't stopped the criminal gangs. We've been told in the past that they've got plans and legislation that was going to deal with this problem and their promises came to nothing and actually we've seen more boat crossings and the criminal gangs getting away with more and more. Russia's war in Ukraine continues with the battered city of Bakhmut still at the centre of a bloody battle between Ukrainian defenders and Russian forces. The Russians appear to be closing in on victory, but ammunition shortages on both sides and a mounting death toll make any victory unlikely to change the course of the war. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov was at the G20 summit in India over the weekend and was busy trying to reshape the story of how the war started. War, uh, which... uh we are trying to stop and which was launched against us using (laughs) Ukrainian people. Of course, it influenced uh, the uh, policy of Russia. If all else fails, US presidential candidate Donald Trump says he has a magical plan that will solve the war in one single day. Speaking at the right-wing CPAC event over the weekend, he was making big promises. I will prevent and very easily World War III, very easily... Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, I will have the disastrous war between Russia and Ukraine settled. The new Windsor framework to solve the outstanding Brexit issues for Northern Ireland was launched with great fanfare last week. But as the DUP consider its details, it appears it may take some time for the new framework to become legislation and eventually be implemented. Government sources suggest it could be two years before the revised rules are in place, but none of that can happen unless the Northern Ireland Assembly is able to resume sitting, all of which depends on Geoffrey Donaldson and his unionist party members. Sinn Féin Vice President Michelle O'Neill says if it takes another election to resolve the issue she's more than ready to hit the campaign trail again. You know, the democratic rules are that if the election isn't respected, then you do go to another election. So, I mean, I hope we don't get to that point, but if we do, then we stand ready to fight such an election. Still to come on the small seven, Liverpool stun Man United and Chris Rock gives Will Smith a good slapping right after this. Welcome back. Three. 
There was plenty of Premier League action this weekend, with Sunday seeing Liverpool hosting Man United at Anfield. United had been on an upward curve, winning the Carabao Cup and making it to the latter stages of the FA Cup and the Europa League. But the team and its manager, Eric Ten Hag, got a rude awakening when they lost 7-0 to a resurgent Liverpool, their worst ever result at Anfield. It sees Liverpool up to fifth place, and after the match, manager Ten Hag gave his thoughts on the team's dismal performance. I'm really disappointed and I'm angry. Uh, especially for our fans, we let them down. Uh, but also, as a squad, as a team, you can't allow this. Uh, you have to stick together and you uh, have to fight with each other. You have to support each other and you have to defend. And that is what we didn't do. So for me, it's not really unprofessional. Daisy Jones and the Six sounds like some kind of Cartoon Network superhero show, but it's actually a 10-episode series on Prime Video that follows the life of a fictional 70s supergroup. It stars Riley Keough as Daisy Jones, and she spilled the beans to Seth Meyers on the show's preparation. The whole cast had to go to music school, and her lack of musical ability was worrying her, until she met co-star Sam Claflin. We had our first singing lesson together, and there was this moment where we were looking at each other, and they kind of like wanted us to sing really close to each other's face and like build chemistry the first time we'd ever met each other. Mm -hmm. um, and we both realized, like, oh, we're both, like, awful. Yeah. <laughs> and from then on, I just felt, like, super grateful to have, that we were both kind of starting. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming up on the first anniversary of the Will Smith slap, or as you might know it, the Oscars. Chris Rock's been pretty low profile since his cheek met Will's palm of fury, but this weekend, that all changed. The slappy had a chance to slap back as he performed on Netflix's first ever live show. Yeah, kind of like what we used to call television. Anyway, Chris made sure that the world was clear on his opinion on Will. Everybody in the world called him a I tried to call him a and give him my condolences. He ain't pick up for me. Everybody called that man a bitch. And who's he hit? Me. This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Dogs.